Hey there, how are you all doing today? Let's learn about systems. Here's a great example of a system, a super cool motorcycle. So what is a system? What factors do we need to consider when talking about a system? Take a moment, observe this motorcycle and think about everything required to make it zoom down the road. The first factor we need to consider when talking about systems are inputs into that system. For this motorcycle, it needs fuel or water or brake fluid from outside of its boundary. Boundaries are the second factor. When we talk about a system, we see where that system begins and when it ends. Third, within the boundaries, processes or functions happen. For example, this motorcycle has a starting unit or braking system. These are all functions that happen within the motorcycle's boundary. The fourth and final factor we need to talk about when thinking about systems are outputs that leave that system. So in the motorcycle, emissions would leave or heat caused by the friction of the tire meeting the road would be an output that leaves the boundary of the system. Some other systems we might want to consider with this discussion would include things like, say, the car that you drove today, or maybe the computer that you're using right now. You could even consider your body as a system. There's a boundary, there's inputs into your body and outputs that leave your body. And there's a whole host of processes and functions that occur within your body. We need to take these four factors, inputs, boundaries, outputs, processes and functions, and apply them to ecological systems or ecosystems. This will be the focus of today's learning object. Keep these factors in mind. All right, it's your turn. Now choose your own system. What inputs are needed? How are the boundaries for your system determined? What processes occur within those boundaries? And lastly, what outputs leave the system you're considering? Here's a bike that I have at home, and we can think about this bicycle as a system, but we need to talk about that because this relates to an ongoing debate with ecologists. When we look at this bike as a system, we can look at it as the bike as a whole, or we could look at it as a bunch of little parts that make up the whole. This applies to ecology and our discussions about ecosystems. For example, if we look at a tree, like this oak tree, we could think about all the little parts and pieces and tissues and leaves and stems and branches that make up the whole tree, and those would be parts of the whole, or we could think about the tree as its entirety, and that would be the whole tree. Different ecologists might ask different questions based on how they look at that example. This debate is called holism versus reductionism. This will be important as we begin to make observations and ask research questions as part of the scientific method later in this course. For now, think about the factors we discussed today related to systems boundaries, inputs, processes and functions, and outputs. And as you look at ecosystems from now on, start thinking about each of those factors in relation to what you're observing. If we think about the processes and functions that happen within an ecosystem's boundary, like biogeochemical cycles, or the movement of energy through a food web, 
we can begin to make sense as to why so few charismatic megafauna like the Florida panther are left in our urbanized world. Let's learn more about ecosystems. When we learn about ecosystems, remember we need to think about the whole ecosystem versus the parts that make up that whole. We need to think about how to determine the boundaries of that ecosystem using factors we discussed earlier like hydro period, soils, and elevation. We need to think about inputs that enter that ecosystem. We need to think about the processes and functions that occur within those ecosystem boundaries. And we also need to think about what outputs leave the boundaries of that ecosystem. This bike is a system. We can certainly see its boundaries, where it begins and where it ends. There's some maintenance that needs to be done. So there's some inputs like air from the outside to fill up the tires, for example. Or grease to help lube the chain and braking systems to make sure it functions properly. Let's tighten up our safety equipment. Make sure our brakes work and straighten the seat and adjust it to its appropriate level, grab your helmet, and this bike's ready to go for a ride. 